In this video, we're going to talk about how to build your Zumi and then walk you through some of the checks you'll want to do before turning Zumi on. You can either follow the build manual that came in your Zumi box or follow along with this video. Let's get started! First, you're going to attach the two motors to the chassis. Make sure the arms of the motors are on the inside of the chassis arms. Also, make sure that the shaft of the motors, which is the part right here, and the wires are towards the back and not towards the front of the chassis. Make sure to double check the directions on this step. Otherwise, if you have things backwards, you'll end up having to take Zumi apart if you find this out after you boot her up. Then, we're going to attach three long socket standoffs to the chassis with three bolts. Next, let's attach a battery right on top of the motors with a piece of Velcro. One sticky piece on top of the motors and one sticky piece on the battery. The Velcro is optional. We recommend skipping this step if you're in a classroom setting, since you may need to replace the battery or motors more often. Either way, make sure the wires are all pointing toward the back. Alright, let's get the Zumi board, which is this piece right here. We'll put two short plug standoffs on top with bolts. Then flip it over to reveal the underside, where we're going to connect the motors into these two connectors. Left motor in here, right motor in here. Now we're going to flip the board back over on top of the chassis, like you're closing a book. When you do, make sure these four IR sensors slide into the four holes in the chassis. Do this carefully to avoid bending or damaging your sensors. Then attach two long plug standoffs to secure the board in place. Attach the mounting bracket to the Zumi board with a thick silver bolt. This bracket is going to hold the OLED screen and the Pi Cam, which we're going to attach next. Here's your Pi Cam. You're going to line up the middle two holes on the camera with the bottom two holes on the mounting bracket, making sure that the cable is on top and attach it with two mounting bolts. Now, here's your Pi Zero. We're going to flip it over like this and connect the camera cable by pulling the latch outward, sliding the cable in, and then closing the latch. Do not detach the latch completely because then your camera cable has nothing to hold it in place. Then, tuck the cable underneath the Pi Zero and line up the very last five rows of pins so that they match with the sockets on the Zumi board and that the front of the Pi Zero lines up with the two standoffs in the front. Do one more check that the pins are lined up and then secure the Pi Zero into place with two short socket standoffs. Now let's attach the OLED screen. Connect the jumper wires to the OLED screen so that the black wire is on the left and the green wire is on the right. Then, line up the bottom two holes on the OLED with the top two holes on the mounting bracket and attach it with two mounting bolts. And be careful, make sure not to tighten it so much that the OLED cracks. Now let's spin things around and you'll connect the other end of the jumper cable to the pins here with the green wire on the left and black wire on the right. The correct orientation of the cable is important. All right, we're almost done. Before we put the shell on, let's do two important checks to make sure that your Zumi does not get damaged when you turn on the power. First, make sure that the last five rows of pins on the Pi Zero are plugged into the Zumi board. 
none of these pins should be hanging out or visible. Second, make sure your OLED jumper cables are plugged in properly. That's black wire on the left, green wire on the right here, and over here, green wire on the left, black wire on the right. Once you've checked that everything is connected properly, let's get the shell and place it on top. Open the trunk by squeezing in the back of the shell, then sliding it on top. Front first, then back down. Make sure to watch out for the front IR sensors, which are these right here. They can bend easily. You'll want to check that the holes are lined up with the standoffs, and then attach the shell with two thin silver bolts in the front and two thick silver bolts in the back. If you're building Zoomy for one of our virtual classes, you can skip ahead to connecting the battery. We'll attach the wheels during our first day of class. Otherwise, you'll attach the wheels on the motors and use the motor bolts to mount them securely. Make sure not to tighten or twist too hard, or you could damage the motors. Also, make sure not to roll the wheels around. This can damage the gears inside the motors. All right, last step. Open Zumi's trunk and make sure that the power switch is in the off position, which is the zero position towards the left. Then, plug in the battery to this connector right here. And that's it! You can head to the next video about powering on and getting to the dashboard. See you there!